Joining me live now to discuss Democracy Day is a presidential aspirant, Professor Kingsley Mogalu. Good to have you here Thank you, on Esther. the News Hour. So let's begin with this not too young to run bill, which yes. the president promised to assent in his democratic in this Democracy Day speech. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's, I mean, the law has been passed by the National Assembly. Mm. It's been uh, given assent by uh, uh, two-thirds of national state legislatures. So what, what choice really does he have but to sign it into law? But you know, it's a very good development, I think. No question, no question about it at all. So is, is it more of a good sign for the people to expect better governance? Because that's the bane that most Nigerians are asking. I think it's more reflective of the opening up of our democratic space and a recognition uh, that has come, albeit slowly, uh, that younger people have a right to be more fully involved, that the youth have a right to be more fully involved in deciding their future. Mm. And I think it's an implicit recognition that the age of the dinosaurs, the old recycled political class, is coming to a gradual end. Now, let's look at this administration. It's marking three years since yes. it came to power 2015. Yeah. How would you score the APC? I'll score it an abysmal failure. Why? Uh, the three main things they promised us that led to their being voted into power, they promised us that they would fight corruption successfully. They promised us that the economy would be better. They promised us that security would be you know, stronger. On each of those three counts, Nigeria is worse off today than it was in 2015. Mm. I think we shouldn't be sentimental about this. We should simply look at the record. The economy has imploded. We've gone through a horrible recession, the worst in 30 years. Uh, poverty is rising in this country. Unemployment is stratospheric. Um, so the result, you know, as we say in law, res ipsa loquitur. Mm. The fact speaks for itself. It's not a matter of sentiment. It's not about political debates. It's just a fact that Nigeria today has become a killing field. Thousands of people have been killed by herdsmen. And we have a government which has failed in its very first duty of protecting the lives and property of citizens. The president is telling us today, after how many years of herdsmen roaming around Nigeria, killing citizens, that they will all be brought to face the law. We've heard this before. Okay, now, but let's quickly come to your ambition, which is to be Nigeria's president. Next president, yes. Next president. Yes. My question, why should anyone vote for you? Oh, because I offer Nigeria a very different kind of leadership. And what is that? That leadership is leadership that will take us into, 20, into the 21st century. A leadership that understands how the economy should be managed and how the economy uh, should be restored. A leadership that understands how to build a real nation. Nigeria is not a nation. We're just a country. Mm. Um, a, a leadership that can restore Nigeria's place in the world. Um, I have all the requisite experience that addresses these three challenges. No other candidate in the 2019 election has the type of experience I have and the type of preparation mm. I have for the presidency. I spent 17 years in the United Nations rebuilding and fixing broken nations around the world, from Croatia to Angola, from uh, Rwanda to the former Yugoslavia. Um, I have been an economic manager as deputy governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, mm. and we, we achieved very good success in the Central Bank at the time, uh, in 2009 to 2014. Mm. And I have very strong diplomatic credentials and diplomatic experience. And so I can project and protect Nigeria's interest in the world. Uh, but there's still a question people sure. are saying. Your party, yes. which is the YPP, yes. is relatively new oh, that's and it's fine. not known. How do you intend to break the ranks of the PDP, the APC, and of course, some other parties that are coming up with the likes of, you know, the old faces that Nigerians have got to know all this time? That's How right. do you intend to break through yeah. and, you know, rise up from the, to be the top? Well, thank you. I mean, uh, the parties, the two big parties, mm. that is the APC and the PDP, don't forget they were built by men, not angels. Um, so men and women will build, will build the YPP, the Young Progressive Party. Yeah. What we have to do, the challenge we face, is to go to the people of Nigeria and explain why we're a better alternative. And the, it's very simple to explain that. The record of the PDP and the APC has been nothing but failure. So we must now face the future. Mm. We must now face the future. And we have to face the future with young, more dynamic political actors who are in politics for service, 
not, you know, in politics to enrich themselves or in politics for ethnic or religious irredentism, as we've seen uh, with these two uh, uh, large parties. So I think, you know, Nigerians want something new now. They want something different. They want something bold. And you can understand why. The demographic is changing. 70% mm -hmm. of Nigerians are young people. Right. They don't live in the past. They live in the future. They want a, re a leadership that they can look at and feel a connection with. Mm -hmm. They don't want their grandfathers, mm -hmm. you know, being their president and not being connected to them in any way, not being able to understand what young people want, what young women want. The Young Progressive Party, the YPP, is a party that is inclusive of people of all ages, mm -hmm. but is a youth-focused faced party. It's a party that is focused on the future. Mm -hmm. So we will simply explain the party. Uh, its logo is an open door, an open door of opportunity. Its uh, motto is service to the people. Right. And that's very critical. That's why I'm running for president. I now, want to that, serve Nigerians. That's the, that statement, service to the people, is yes. something that most Nigerians don't seem to get yes. from the leaders over time. Absolutely. And you say you're trying to you know, change the narrative and become you know, perhaps the best leader that Nigeria will ever have to get to have. Yes. But are you also looking at you know, involving other young persons like yourself, because right now we have lots of presidential candidates, sure. young presidential candidates yes. all over the place. Yes. Are you intending to, you know, come together as one team? Because that is what we saw in 2015, yes. where we had the likes of the APC coming together as one united force, That's right. taking out the PDP. Yes. Are you also working in that tandem? And when the APC took out the PDP, what was the result? We just went from frying pan into fire. You see, it's not about what people do. It's about the results, the quality of the results of the actions that we take. In 2019, I'm happy that there's a much wider democratic space than there was in 2015. And so I think we have much more quality now. Um, and it would be a good thing if parties can come together in coalitions and things like that. But it's a democracy, you know. People have a right to express themselves. Sometimes I think that as we go towards the elections, a lot of dynamics will unfold. Mm. I don't want to break my leg with dances about coalitions at this point. I'm focused on my vision as a presidential aspirant and hopefully become the official candidate of my party um, uh, later this year. And then we'll go to, uh, to the elections with the vision that we have for the people of Nigeria. Mm. And that's a vision that will change our lives. Now, there's a particular issue that's affecting most Nigerians, which is security. Yes. And the president has come out to say that they will do their best to ensure that lives are protected and properties aren't destroyed. We've heard that before. Well, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more or less like a norm to some people. But how do you think you can address this aspect yes. that most Nigerians find so difficult to accept at this time? Let me tell you what I'll do that will be very different from what President Buhari has done or what he has failed to do. The first thing is that I have the political will to secure the lives and property of Nigerians, which the current government simply does not have. Let me demonstrate to you that the government lacks the political will. When you see people being killed, like has been going on in Nigeria by the herdsmen, and none of them up till today has been brought to account, I don't care what you tell me. I'm more interested in what you do or don't do. This government has failed to bring anybody to accountability for the killings of Nigerians. It shows that the government itself has failed in its duty. So what will you do differently? What I will do differently is that I have the political will. I will reform the police force. I'm going to recruit 1.5 million to 2 million policemen in this country. They will be armed. They will be trained. They will be equipped properly. We're going to have for the first time in many decades, a modern police force that mm. can secure our communities. So that's concrete reform. You can't have a population of 200 million and have a, uh, a police force of 350,000. That is a joke. So that's the first step I'll take. I will reform the police national security architecture. We will interpret national security much more broadly than this government has interpreted it. When they came into power, they were just focused on Boko Haram. 
which they claim to have degraded, but they just sound into Nigerian territory, kidnap girls, and walk out. And then they bring them back, allegedly for a ransom, and people are cheering them. So I don't know when you say you've degraded Boko Haram, but we know that they still affect our lives in a very significant way in the Northeast. So to your own part, you would do a work in terms of police reform? Police reform, mm. national security reconceptualization, because I think this government was too narrowly focused on Boko Haram. All right. So they did not look at other aspects of national. And then one important thing that I'm going to do as president of this country, which has not been done before, and I have the political will, which mm. this government does not have, is to secure Nigeria's borders. All right, let's leave it at that and wish you the very best. Kingsley Mogalu, presidential aspirant, we appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Good to be here. On the program. Thank you.